You know, there's nothing better in the summer, buddy, than enjoying a nice, fresh, crisp Mexican lager. This style of beer is so interesting. So you might think, why is this style of lager? And they're very particular. I mean, if you have a Modelo, if you have a Corona, if you have a Dos Equis, whatever it is, a Pacifico, there is a very particular character to Mexican lagers. So buddy, I think you are the most equipped being the beer genius that you are, the beer savant that you are. I think you are. Too kind. <laughs> you're much Too more kind, equipped than friend. me. That's for sure. To give our good viewers <laughs> at home a good sense of the history, but just also the what is a Mexican lager. Thank you so much, my friend, for this beautiful introduction and for the kindness of your words. And so let me let me cheer to that, like and cheer to cheers, us. Buddy. And, uh, cheers. Mm. And let's begin our adventure. Mm. So, and for the occasion, I brought in a beer scroll with some oh God, some yes. uh, an endless source of information, as we very well know. It's a Mexican beer scroll. We've never been blessed with a Mexican, a Mexican beer scroll on the channel before. We've had Canadian beer scrolls. We've had Belgian beer scrolls. Yeah, you're right. There have been, been a few different types of scrolls here <laughs> on the channel. And while I was doing a little bit of research, uh, the beer it's research is very like important. you always discover new things as you, as you go through. Where do they originate? Because when you think about uh, American general, the lager tradition exists, but how did it get there like and where is it coming from like when it comes to the united states there's a specific like route where mexico like how does that tie in right right so brewing tradition existed in mexico even before the european uh, conquistadores arrived they had different type of prime material and that's a, maybe a story for another time but the brewing tradition uh, the, as as we know it like was brought in with the Spanish. So they, they came in in the 16th century, started brewing mostly like because that's what they knew from their country. But then what happened is that uh, because of the fact that uh, Spain was trying to keep their monopoly over uh, the products and, and, and prevent their colonies from producing them so that they had to actually import them from the mainland, the brewing tradition started like falling off. And then we had at a certain point, like the Mexican War of Independence, my friend. So you see, there you go, a kind of a beer war because people were unhappy. This is just pure interpretation. We're unhappy that they, they couldn't have like their beer. That's, that's my interpretation. Of that it. makes perfect sense. I'd be very unhappy too. Right, right. The Mexican War of Independence. What happened as a consequence of that is that some of those restrictions that were posed like disappeared. An archduke from Austria, Maximilian the I, was was crowned as the second Mexican emperor. Being him from Austria, as we very well know, in Austria there's a big tradition of brewing. So a lot of Austrian and German immigrants started coming over to Mexico, and they brought over their love. For beer, including the emperor himself, who had like his own private brewer. And at the time when this was happening in the 19th century, the predominant style that was brewed back in Europe for lager was, as we very well know, the Vienna style lager, yeah. which is a slightly darker than the one that we all are familiar with now, the, the classic pale color. There is quite a few beers that still are lingering around coming from that tradition. Uh, the Negra Modelo. We've talked That's right. recently about the that sort of classic Vienna Amber. lager. Exactly. And then we also have uh, a few others like the Bohemian. There you have also like a Vienna uh, style lager. There's many others that linger there in the in the in the distance, like uh, and that are less <laughs> known. So they all come from this tradition of uh, German immigrants that came around like in the 19th century. Moving on from there. Like quite a few breweries like started developing because of this love for beer that the German brought, but two in particular stand out like from all the others. Like one we've talked about, like the Cerveceria Modelo, that yeah. which we have an example here, which is responsible probably for some of the biggest brands that most people here, at least in the states, know the Modelo, the Corona, and many others. But the second one we've also discussed is the Montezuma, uh, the one that brews like the yes. uh, which is now owned by... You don't want Montezuma's Revenge. Exactly. So those two are probably, to this day, some of the largest ones. And also it's worth mentioning that Mexico not only produces a, an insane amount of beer, but it's also one of the world 
biggest exporters of beer. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which was quite shocking. Sense. Yeah, and most of the beer export they, uh, export goes like to the United States. Dude, which that makes perfect makes sense because if you think about it, just Corona, Modelo alone, just those two brands, yeah. they're everywhere. Probably worldwide in every corner store yeah. for the most part, right? Especially Corona. And another fact that I didn't mention, but ties a little bit into that for probably for the reason why, like that the export business in Mexico for beer, like grew so much, the United States had like their prohibition that bumped up the love for Mexican beer much more because a lot of uh, the Americans would move down to Mexico to, you know, experience the, the beer. They fell in love with it. And obviously once uh, the prohibition was lifted, then those beers started getting imported back in. And that's now like something that, Clearly, it's one of the main countries to which they export. Like the style nowadays really resembles more of a pale lager exactly. type of style. It tends to be even lighter in some, uh, to some extent. So when you think about like beers like Corona, the interesting fact is that it has followed pretty much the same trend that went across in Europe just a little bit later and then also in the United States. But it never quite made it to the very, uh, or at least not yet, uh, to the very light adjunct based beer type that it's a little bit more prominent or was a little bit more prominent here in the United States. And, and I think that this one here, the Modelo Especial is a great example of that, like of how like you can obviously find other beers, but there is still a very core uh, presence of that German uh, immigrants that brought their love for beer in Mexico. Oh my God, man. That was... If anybody anywhere in the world is looking for an explanation on what Mexican lagers are, that was, I think by far probably, the best explanation that was ever offered anywhere worldwide in history. <laughs> I would venture to say, I would on YouTube, I would venture to say. That was amazing, dude, thank you. This was, this was your magnum opus, this episode. That was amazing. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Let us know your favorite Mexican lagers down below. Whatever you do. Don't forget to close your beer brackets. That's right. Never. Cheers, everyone.